to talk and does what he wants. I'm referring, of course, to Blackjack Mulligan. A pleasure to have him here on Georgia Championship Wrestling. Well, let me tell you something, Mr. Soley. It must be really an amazement for you to, for a while, for a long time, to take take a look at a man for the first time in a long time. You got Ron Fuller out here walking around. Yeah, I don't know where I'm at. I'm not sure where I'm at or what I'm doing. They got to call on his little brother to help him get him in the ring. Now, let me tell you something. That's what we're talking about. Let's get a few priorities straight today as to what's happening. I've been talking to Ron Bass a lot lately, and Ron has enlightened me on some things that's been going on. He says, Mo, you've been laying back a little bit. Where's all the championship belts? Where's all the world titles? Where's all the tag team laurels? That things go by him. You take a look at the Von Erichs. Oh, little Von Erich, little Carrie. The Von Erichs, you take a look at Armstrong. Oh, Daddy, Daddy, can I go to the bathroom? Yes, son, you can go to the bathroom, but you hurry up and be back here. I don't want you to get hurt. That's what I'm talking about. You've got to start looking out for yourself, brother. This is a tough old world out here. And Mulligan hadn't survived a long time taking back seat to anybody. And then let me tell you something, instead of being an example for my shining family, I'm going to start making examples of people, and Mulligan has arrived on the scene again, and you're going to start seeing people fall. I don't care if it's the Armstrongs, the Steakin' Fullers, the Funks of Von Erichs, the Andersons. I don't like anybody, and I don't care about them. I have no friends, family, brothers, sisters, cousins. It makes no difference. Brother, I'll stab you in the back in a second to make a buck, and you watch what happens, Gordon Soley, from this moment on. What are you looking at? You've made your point, sir. He's made his point. Let's turn it over to the ring. And so it is uh, Ed Tim's move. Wow, and Mulligan never even gave Tim's a chance. Drop Tim's as uh, he was walking toward one side. Mulligan plants that size 16 into his chest. Now driving those 16s into the chest once again of uh, Ed Tim's. Mulligan is about as big and as bad as they come. And I have never quite seen him in this uh, mood of total animosity that uh, he is exhibiting here today. But uh, he has always been a volatile, rather unpredictable competitor. And well, my good friend Big Red has joined me here. Oh, I'm glad to be I've been on TV. I just want to come out and check this big man out here, you know, say hello to my fans and stuff, you know what I mean? He is a big man. There's no question about that. And it is uh, Mulligan continuing to uh, dominate the situation. Wow. Mulligan caught him right over the heart. Did not allow the pin. I mean, you know, you got a man down. You know, I'm, I'm a big man myself. When I get a man down, I go on and beat him. You know what I mean? You don't know who's to punish somebody for nothing. Well, that's an interesting point, and certainly uh, it does take a certain sadistic streak, I think, in somebody to continue punishing them when they think they have him beat. Yeah, you know, wrestling is wrestling. The hurt opponent is a hurt opponent. You know, go and do what you got to do and get it over with. Mulligan caught him with an elbow that time. Coming off the ropes, Tim stunned, dropped to the canvas. And uh, Mulligan, who has an extremely effective claw, comes down across the head, catching one temple on Ed Tim's, and Tim's very quickly conceding. That claw is something else, I'm telling you. Well, this is the thing about Mulligan, of course. He has achieved an international reputation. He has tremendous strength in that claw and uses it very